Chapter 32 Why are you bothering me with trespassers? A mangy old black and white she cat looked up from a dead pigeon. This must be Jay. Talltail shifted his paws nervously. The cats had ushered him and Jake into a clearing surrounded by unlit dens and dotted with piles that stank of crow food. Feathers stuck to Jay's graying muzzle. She shook them away. I'm trying to eat. As she curled her lip, Talltail saw she had no teeth. If she were in a clan, she'd be an elder by now. Pixie nudged him forward. We found these two nosing around the alley, she explained. Talltail flashed her a look. Unease was creeping beneath his pelt, but he wasn't going to show these ragged strays that he was scared. He flexed his claws. You don't have to push. Are you planning on pushing back? Pixie challenged with a hiss. Not yet. In the moonlight clearing, he could see her scarred muzzle and thin, yellowing tail. He guessed she'd been white once. Jake padded past Talltail. We haven't come to start a fight, he mewed to Jay. Talltail saw movement at the edge of his vision. He jerked his head around, scanning the shadows. Cats were creeping forward, their eyes glinting in the moonlight. Some wore collars, but they couldn't be kitty pets. Their pelts were ragged and flea-bitten, their ears nicked, their noses scratched. Talltail eyed them warily, wondering if Jake understood how much danger they were in. A russet-furred she-cat padded to Jay's side. What are they doing here? She asked, her narrow gaze fixing on Talltail. Talltail stiffened. Were they going to have to fight their way out of here? Jay shrugged. Don't ask me, Red. It was Marmalade and Pixie who brought them. She bent down stiffly and tried to wrestle a piece of flesh from the pigeon with her gums. The ginger Tom who'd helped Pixie escort them here pushed past Talltail. We caught them. Well done, Marmalade, Red met his gaze with a withering look. Did you think they were mice? Marmalade's pelt rose along his spine, but he said nothing. Red padded closer to Talltail and sniffed him. You smell strange, and you're small for a kitty pet. He's not a kitty pet, he's a clan cat, meowed Jake. Red narrowed her eyes. Then what's he doing here? He's with me, Jake shook out his fur. We're on a mission. We came to ask Jay a question. Talltail hissed in his ear. Don't tell them everything. Jake blinked at him. They're not interested. Talltail nodded toward the cats milling in the shadows. And we don't want them to be interested. They might try to stop us. Jake frowned. But they might be able to help us. Talltail lashed his tail. These cats looked as helpful as a shadow clan patrol. Let me do the talking, he insisted. Jay lifted her head. That's just what I need, a talker. Talltail straightened. Just imagine she's Whiteberry. He was used to coaxing grumpy elders into a better mood when damp weather made their bones ache. I'm sorry to bother you, he began softly. But Jake said you're the only cat who knows everything that happens around here. That's true enough. Jake conceded, narrowing her eyes. We're tracking some rogues who may have passed this way two moons ago, Talltail explained as briefly as he could. We were hoping you'd seen them. Why? Jay rasped. Are they worth seeing? Talltail shrugged, trying not to seem too eager. They're just rogues. Marmalade pricked his ears. What does a clan cat want with rogues? Red padded around Talltail. Perhaps he wants to join them. Her gaze flicked over his pelt. Perhaps he's bored of the clans. Talltail ignored her. One of them's called Sparrow. Jay rubbed a feather from her nose with her paw. 
Why is a clan cat traveling with a kitty pet? Her gaze rested on Jake. Jake glanced at Talltail as though asking permission to speak. Talltail kept his attention on Jay. He likes clan cats, that's all, he mewed. Clan cats. Jay's eyes clouded as though she was remembering something from long ago. I knew a cat once who liked clan cats. She bent down and tugged unsuccessfully at the pigeon's flesh. Jake trotted forward. Let me help. Talltail's heart lurched as Jake hooked the pigeon away from Jay. He flexed his claws, ready to fight, as red and marmalade showed their teeth. Growls rumbled from the shadows. At the edge of the clearing, the flea-bitten cats padded closer. I can rip off a chunk so you can get to the soft flesh, Jake mewed cheerfully. He went on as Jay stared at him, wide-eyed. It's okay, I won't eat any. I'll just find you a juicy bit. He nuzzled through the feathers and, holding the pigeon still with a paw, peeled off a strip. He dropped it at Jay's paws and tore off another. Then he pushed the pigeon back toward her. It'll be easy to get into now. Talltail blinked. Was Jake really as rabbit-brained as he seemed? He'd nearly had a swarm of spitting cats on their tails. Jay leaned down and sniffed the hunks of flesh, dabbing a piece with her tongue. She sat up and glanced at her companions. Why couldn't one of you think of that? Pixie bristled. Marmalade glared at Jake. I'm sure they did, Jake told her, but they were too polite to offer. Jay snorted. Any more politeness and I'd starve to death. As she bent and took a bite, Jake leaned closer. Can Talltail ask you those questions now? About the rogues? Chewing, Jay tipped her head. Go on. Talltail pricked his ears. Perhaps Jake had just found a way to get them the answers he wanted. Not so rabbit-brained after all, kitty pet. I heard they might have come this way. Have you seen them? Jay swallowed. Do they have names? Sparrow, Talltail told her again slowly. He's brown. He was traveling with Bess, Algernon, Mole, and Rena. Jay poked distractedly at the pigeon with her paw. Are they all rogues? Yes, Talltail dug his claws into the cracked earth. Jake nodded to Jay. Why don't you have another mouthful of pigeon, he suggested. It'll help you think. Perhaps it will. The old she-cat pulled at the flesh with her gums, tearing a fresh morsel away, and began chewing. Rogues, you say, she murmured, her mouth full. Rogues with house cat names, mind you. They travel together. Talltail tried to hide the impatience pricking in his fur, they would have passed this way about two moons ago. Jay nodded slowly, then swallowed. Oh, yes, I remember them. Red found them hunting our alleys. She looked toward the tawny she-cat. Was that them? Red frowned. Was there a black and white she-cat with them? Talltail's ears twitched excitedly. And a small gray tom and a ginger and white. That was them, Red nodded. We let them take one piece of prey each, then moved them on. When? Talltail's whiskers were quivering. Was the moon full, Marmalade? Red asked. Marmalade glanced at the sky. Not as full as this. How long were the days? Talltail wanted to know if they'd passed one moon ago or two. Not much longer than this, Red told him. So last moon? Talltail prompted. Jay's tail began to flick. Whenever it was, they've gone now. She ducked down for another mouthful of pigeon. You should go too before you wear out my ears with your questions. Red and Marmalade padded closer to Talltail, tails flicking. Okay, we're going. 
Talltail turned away from the mangy old she-cat, beckoning Jake with a nod. Thanks for your help, Jake called to Jay. Jay blinked at the kitty pet. Thanks for yours, Jake purred. I'm sure Red or Marmalade will help with your fresh kill next time. Sure we will, Red hissed through gritted teeth. Talltail nudged Jake away. Come on, before you try to organize this bunch of loners into a clan. He steered him toward the far side of the clearing, his pelt rippling uneasily as they passed the watching strays. There was a gap between the cracked dens that would lead them clear. I told you she'd help, Jake purred as they reached it. You didn't tell me you were leading us into an enemy camp, Talltail muttered. He ducked into the alley and quickened his pace. The sooner he was away from here, the better. Jake trotted after him. You found out what you wanted to know, didn't you? Yes, now let's get out of here. Talltail paused and looked back. And thanks for your help, Jake. You did well to get that old she-cat to tell us about the rogues. Jake shrugged. It's like dealing with housefolk. You get more out of them by being friendly. The far side of the alley opened onto a row of neat, grassy squares. A long stretch of mesh divided them from the dilapidated dens. Talltail squeezed under the mesh, relieved to see the tiny meadows ahead. No more dodging broken glass. The grass felt soft beneath his paws. How far is it to the end of Two Lake Place? Jake nodded toward the large red stone den at the end of the little meadow. There are open fields beyond there. Talltail followed his gaze. Beyond the den, there is nothing but wide star-speckled sky and rolling dark emptiness below. The rogues would have kept going, he guessed. Past two-leg place. Or they might have turned back, Jake pointed out. There's warmth and shelter here. Only if you've got a two-leg looking after you, Talltail meowed. He started trotting toward the red stone den. Jake stayed where he was. Talltail stopped. Was Jake going to go home now? An unexpected pang tugged his heart. He glanced over his shoulder. Jake was sniffing the air, his eyes flashing with excitement. I smell food. He turned and disappeared around the corner of the den. Now where's he going? Talltail peered around the edge of the red stone. Jake's hind legs were disappearing through a small flap, like the one where he lived. Talltail stared. What in the name of Star Clan is he doing? His heart began to race as he stared at the flap, expecting Jake to explode out with a vicious kitty pet or angry dog on his tail. But nothing happened. As Talltail's belly began to growl, Jake's head poked from the flap. Come and get some, he called. There's plenty. He licked his lips, and the scent of little brown pellets drifted to Talltail on the breeze. You want me to steal kitty pet food? Jake nodded. Why not? There's always more. What about the kitty pet who lives there? Talltail asked. Won't he mind? It smells like a she, and she must be asleep upstairs. Or out. There's no sign of her by the food. I'd rather hunt, thanks, Talltail muttered. Now that he was almost out of two-leg place, he didn't need to eat those dry pellets anymore. Okay. Jake ducked back inside. Talltail growled under his breath. He might as well catch some fresh kill while he was waiting for Jake to stuff his belly. He began to sniff along the bushes at the grass, sticking his head under the leaves of a laurel and tasting the air. He smelled shrew. Mouth watering, he crept under the branches. The soil crunched frostily beneath his paws. Following his nose, he squeezed past the thick stem and tracked the scent to a spiky bush, then into tall grass. The stems swished as he pushed through, showering dusty seed over his pelt. The shrew smell grew stronger. Grass rustled ahead. Straining to see in the shadows, 
Tall Tail spotted a small shape moving beneath a holly bush. He pressed his belly to the ground. He'd learned from chasing the mouse into two-leg place that hunting in thick undergrowth took more patience than speed. The shape scuttled, then stopped. It was definitely a shrew. Tall Tail could make out its small, pointed nose as it snuffled among the leaf litter. Stealthily, he crept forward, keeping low so that his spine didn't disturb the branches hanging above. A tail length from the shrew, he flung his paws forward and pounced. The shrew's paws scrabbled on the leaf litter, but Tall Tail was quick and pinned its tail. Hooking it close, he killed it with a bite. He gulped it down and padded onto the moonlit grass, feeling pleased with himself. Jake was lying beside the two-legged den, belly up, happily washing his paws. As Tall Tail padded toward him, he hauled himself up and belched. Catch something? A shrew. Was it tasty? You should catch one and find out. Jake sat back on his haunches. Would you teach me? Tall Tail shrugged. We're at the end of Two Lake Place. He nodded to the alleyway. It would lead past the red stone den to open fields. You'll be going home, won't you? Jake looked up at the moon. In the morning, let's find somewhere to sleep. He gazed across the grass at a small wooden den. What about that shed? Tall Tail glanced over his shoulder. It looked like the den he'd been poisoned in. No thanks, I'd rather sleep under a bush. Okay, Jake looked around. Which one? He padded toward the laurel. This looks like it'll give us some shelter. What if the kitty pet whose food you just stole comes out in the night? Tall Tail didn't fancy waking up to a fight. Let's head toward the fields then, Jake suggested. There'll be a hedge or something, won't there? Tall Tail narrowed his eyes. I thought you weren't leaving Two Lake Place. I want to see what it's like sleeping in the wild. Jake headed toward the alley and disappeared into the shadows. Tall Tail padded after him. If this kitty pet wanted to play warrior, why argue? He'd be gone tomorrow. Another pang bit his belly. He ignored it and followed Jake to the front of the den, where another tiny meadow stretched to a low stone wall. He leaped it after Jake and trotted over a short stretch of grass that led to a rutted thunder path, deserted in the moonlight. They crossed it side by side, their shadows stretching across the dried mud, then jumped into the long grass beyond. Tall Tail slipped into the lead. They were in wild territory now. The quiet darkness felt soothing after the glaring noise of Two Leg Place. Tall Tail weaved through the grass and jumped over a ditch. A thick hedge edged the other side, and he crept under it. The earth was dry. Let's sleep here. He began to scoop out a hollow with his paws. Jake watched him. You dig your nests? There's nothing to sleep on, Tall Tail kept on scraping. A hollow will keep us warm. Jake watched and then copied him, pawing at the earth until he'd dug a shallow dip. Won't the roots make it prickly? Jake stared in dismay at the gnarled hedge roots that he'd uncovered. They won't hurt you, Tall Tail curled into his own scoop. I'm not used to lumps in my nest. You wanted to know what it's like sleeping wild. Tall Tail could feel roots jabbing between his ribs too, but he wasn't going to say anything. Besides, it's just for tonight. We'll make better nests tomorrow, he promised, closing his eyes. Jake didn't reply, but Tall Tail heard his pelt swish as he settled into his uncomfortable scoop. We'll make better nests tomorrow. Why had he said that? Jake would be going home at dawn, and I'll be tracking the rogues. Excitement pricked in Tall Tail's paws as he pictured Sparrow 
imagined sinking his claws into the rogue's fur, hearing him plead for mercy. Talltail was on his trail. He knew he would find Sparrow, and soon, very soon, he would have his revenge. Chapter 33 Sunlight woke Talltail. He opened his eyes, squinting as rays sliced through the hedge. He slunk, stretching from his makeshift den and shook out his fur. A sharp frost had hardened the earth and whitened the meadows. Ahead, the land sloped to a rugged hilltop where the sun squatted on the horizon, spilling light over the silver grass. The hedge rattled behind him. It looks like a good day for walking. Jake's mew was thick with sleep as he stumbled from beneath the branches. He yawned, then blinked at the hilltop. Is that the way you're heading? I guess so. The hilltop would be a good place to start. From there, he could decide which route the rogues might have taken. It looked rocky and exposed, the slope steeper and more rugged than Wind Clan territory. Anxiety pricked at his belly. Had any clan cat traveled this far before? You don't sound sure. Talltail felt Jake's pelt brush against his as the kitty pet stood beside him. The rogues could have gone anywhere, Talltail pointed out. He gazed across the open stretch of grassland that curved past Two Lake Place. What if they'd decided to take the low path, keeping out of the cold wind? You've got to start somewhere, Jake meowed. But where? Talltail frowned. This might have been strange country to him, but the rogues had probably walked this route for moons and knew all its secrets, all the best places to shelter and find food. Why don't we climb the hill, like you said, Jake mewed. From up there, it might be obvious which way they'd choose. We? Talltail blinked. I thought you were going home. Eventually, Jake held his gaze. But there's no harm in seeing what's on the other side of the hill. Talltail paused, wondering why he didn't feel irritated. This was his mission. He didn't need help, especially not from a kitty pet. Yet suddenly the looming hill seemed less daunting. He shrugged. Okay. The wind whipped his whiskers as he padded up the slope. Jake followed a few paces behind, his head switching back and forth as he scanned the landscape. When sharp gray rocks began to jut from the grass and the slope steepened, Talltail paused and waited for him to catch up. You're shivering. Jake's silky fur was rippling along his spine. I'm okay, he muttered tightly. There'll be shelter on the other side. I hope so, Talltail wasn't convinced. Though he could hardly feel the wind through his short, thick fur, he knew it'd be fiercer once they'd reached the top. It was sweeping over the hilltop toward them. What if it makes Jake turn back? Talltail glanced anxiously over his shoulder. Two-leg place sprawled just beyond the hedge, it wouldn't take long for Jake to reach the shelter of its stone walls and tiny fenced-in meadows. Jake leaped past him up the rocky slope, his paws slithering on the frosty rock. This way's easier, Talltail called. He veered around the outcrop, following a grassy trail, but Jake scrabbled stubbornly on. If I can climb up two leg walls, I can manage this, he growled. Talltail reached the hilltop first, and a cold blast of air snatched his breath away. He narrowed his eyes against the icy wind and tried to ignore the pang of disappointment digging in his belly. Jake would turn back now, surely. Focusing, he surveyed the land sloping ahead. It was like being on Outlook Rock again. The view was different, but he still had a hawk's eye and took only a few moments to scan the valley. The land rose and fell gently on one side. The other was steep and barren, topped by craggy peaks. 
a river sparkled between, meandering along the valley bottom, and in the hollow between two low hills, a dense wood nestled like moss in a nest. That's where they'd head, Jake's breathless mew took him by surprise. Talltail followed the kitty pet's gaze toward the wooded hollow. If they're anything like me, they'll be looking for shelter. Jake flattened his ears against the wind. Talltail sniffed. If they were anything like you, they'd be snuggled up in a two-leg den eating kitty pet food. He paused, pelt pricking as he realized how mean he sounded. Sorry. He caught Jake's green gaze. I just meant they're not kitty pets. They might have their own ideas about shelter. Jake shifted his paws. I know I'm a kitty pet. I'm happy with that. He began to head down the slope that led into the valley. It doesn't mean I can't walk a different path for a while. Talltail bounded after him. As he caught up, a screeching cry echoed across the valley. Jake froze. Fox! His eyes widened with fear. Out here? I thought they only lived in two-leg place. Foxes are like rats, they live everywhere. Talltail studied the hillside. The bark had sounded close. A red pelt scurried across the grass below them. Where can we hide? Jake's pelt bristled, his gaze darting across the wide stretch of grass in front of them. He nodded toward a smooth gray boulder. It won't see us if we crouch behind that. Just stand still, Talltail ordered. But it'll see us. Jake's mew was edged with panic. There's nowhere to hide out here. Talltale guessed that Jake was missing his shadowy alleys and dens. There are plenty of places to hide. He nodded toward the long grass sprouting beyond the boulder. It stretched all the way to the bottom of the valley. They could cross the entire hillside hidden among the rippling stems. Trees and bushes lined the river where it ended. Just imagine that the grass and bushes are walls and fences. Besides, the wind will protect us. The wind? Jake blinked at him. How? It's blowing this way, Talltel explained. We can smell the fox, but it can't smell us. He opened his mouth and let the musky scent wash his tongue as the fox slunk toward a swath of bracken and disappeared. See? He flicked his tail as the fox's pelt melted among the russet fronds. It never even noticed us. Jake was already heading for the long grass. Talltail bounded after him, pushing through the stems a tail length behind. He could smell Jake's fear scent, stronger than his normal aroma, and knew he had to calm Jake down before the fox detected it. We could beat a fox easily, Talltail called. If we fought together, Jake slowed. I guess we drove off that dog. Talltail fell in beside him. I can teach you some battle moves if you'd like. The ground sloped more steeply as they neared the river. Battle moves? Jake let out a tiny yelp as his paws slithered beneath him. Talltail dug in his claws to get a better grip. We're called warriors for a reason. Who do you fight? Jake bounded down a sharp drop, scrambling to a halt as the land began to flatten out. Shadow Clan and River Clan mostly, Talltail replied, negotiating the drop more smoothly. We share borders with them. Like fighting over fences, Talltail's pelt ruffled. It's more important than that, he huffed. We're not just being selfish over a patch of ground. We're fighting for our clan's survival. A true warrior would die to save his clan. Jake narrowed his eyes. Is that why you're out here risking your life? He asked. To save your clan? Talltail hurried ahead, grass brushing his pelt. I'm avenging my father. How will that help your clan? Talltail turned on Jake, hissing. My clan has nothing to do with this. It has to. You're a warrior. Confusion clouded Jake's gaze. Tall Tales' thoughts whirled and tangled. A warrior avenges the death of a clanmate, doesn't he? 
I'm doing this for Sandgorse. He stiffened. My father wants me to avenge his death. Sandgorse's amber gaze glowed in his mind. Then he pictured it disappearing under a deluge of mud. Blood roared in his ears. Talltail? Jake was circling him. Are you okay? Talltail padded past him, forcing his pelt to flatten. I'm fine. He slid from the long grass at a point where scrubby, cow-trodden pasture sloped gently toward the river. Jake popped out beside him. As he gazed across the valley to the wooded hollow, his belly rumbled. There'll be prey in those bushes, Talltail nodded toward the hawthorn that crowded the riverbank. Beyond the bare, prickly branches, sun sparkled on the rippling water. Overhead, cold blue sky stretched between the hilltops. Talltail tasted the air. The scent of fox was growing stale. The stone tang of frost was tinged with the smell of sheep, refreshing after the jumble of acrid two-leg scents. Talltail bounded across the grass. Jake raced beside him, taking the lead and skidding to a halt by the bushes. Talltail stopped beside him, surprised to find himself breathless. Are you okay? Jake leaned closer. Fine, Talltail panted. You look ruffled. I guess I'm still weak from the poison. Do you want to rest while I hunt? Jake offered. A purr caught in Talltail's throat. Do you know how to hunt? I caught a bird once, Jake puffed out his chest. Talltail tipped his head, impressed. It was a bit injured when I found it, Jake admitted, but it flapped a lot before I killed it. Talltail rolled his eyes. Let's hunt together, he suggested. He nosed his way between the hawthorn bushes. Beyond them, water lapped against the dark brown earth, deeply pitted by the hooves of animals. Tall tail padded along the edge of the river, keeping a wary eye on the surface. Mouse scent touched his nose. Wait. He dropped to a crouch, beckoning for Jake to do the same with a flick of his tail. Something was scuttling beneath the branches up ahead. He crept forward, his paws as light as falling snow, and rounded the bush. Stopping, he peered through and caught sight of the mouse. It was sitting under a branch, grasping a berry in its paws. Talltail held still. He could see Jake creeping closer on the far side of the bush. Wait! He willed Jake not to scare away their prey. The mouse scurried forward. Its scent washed Talltail's nose. Another few paw steps and he'd reach it easily. He hesitated. Why not let Jake catch it? Every cat should learn how to hunt, even a kitty pet. The mouse moved again. Peering under the bush, Talltail saw it skitter sideways. He was going to have to drive it straight toward Jake or the kitty pet would never catch it. He lunged beneath the branches, screwing up his eyes against the prickly twigs. Paws stretched, he skidded on his belly and burst out the other side. Jake gasped as the mouse darted toward him. Then, fast as a weasel, he slammed his paws down on the tiny creature. Bite its spine, Talltail called. Jake clamped his jaws around the mouse's neck and killed it with a sharp nip. Talltail wriggled out from beneath the bush, wincing as thorns jabbed his pelt. Well done! Jake sat up, blinking, the mouse dangling from his mouth. He looked as surprised as the mouse. He dropped it onto the ground and purred. I caught it! Talltail swallowed the urge to point out that the mouse had practically run into his teeth. You reacted quickly. Thanks. Jake stared at the mouse uncertainly. Now what? You can eat it. What about you? It's your catch. You helped. Jake nudged it toward Talltail with a paw. Let's share. Is that okay? Jake cocked his head. You share in the clan, don't you? 
only if it's offered, Talltale told him. I'm offering, Jake nodded at the mouse. You can have first bite. Talltale felt Jake's gaze on him as he leaned down and bit into the warm flesh of the mouse. It tasted sweet. Have some, he pushed it back toward Jake. Jake took a bite, sitting up to chew. Talltale watched his eyes soften. Do you like it? Yes, Jake purred, and he took another bite, crunching through bone like a clan-born cat. He nudged the carcass toward Talltale. You finish it, he ordered. You still need to get your strength back. Talltale didn't argue. His legs felt shaky from the hunt. Do you want to rest? Jake asked as he finished the last scrap. Talltale looked across the stretch of meadows toward the woods. Let's keep going. He wanted to reach the trees before dark. Woodland was gloomy enough at sun high. It would be as suffocating as a tunnel when dusk approached. He stood up and shook out his fur. Jake licked his lips. Together they headed across the grass, which rippled around them like water in the cold breeze. By the time they reached the trees, Talltale's paws were trembling with tiredness. He fluffed out his fur, suddenly chilled to the bone. Jake brushed against him. You look exhausted. Talltale shrugged. I'm okay. Why don't we find a place to rest? Jake glanced up at the sun. It was beginning to slide toward the hilltop behind them. We've traveled far enough. Talltale's pelt twitched. We need to catch the rogues. They won't be traveling fast, Jake meowed confidently. They're rogues. They can travel where they like, when they like. What's the hurry? Talltale was too weary to argue. He let Jake lead him into the shelter of the trees. The kitty pets stared up in wonder at the crisscrossing canopy of branches. It's like a huge den. Talltale didn't look. It was bad enough listening to the branches rattle in the wind. Trunks crowded around him, bushes and shadow pressing between them, trapping his paws, shutting out the breeze. Jake bounded forward and padded around a tree, staring up. A scent had caught his attention. He darted over to sniff a bramble that tumbled out from between two trunks. It's busier than two-leg place, he meowed excitedly. There are prey smells everywhere. Talltale sat down. Great, he muttered. Jake glanced over his shoulder. Look for a hollow to rest in, he mewed. He nodded toward a dip between the roots of an oak. That might make a good nest. He ducked away past a hawthorn. Talltale felt a twinge of anxiety as Jake's tail disappeared. Where are you going? I'll be back. Jake's mew echoed from the trees. You rest. Talltail padded heavily toward the oak roots. The hollow was deep, and moss grew on the damp earth inside. Talltail clambered over the edge and curled into it. The moss was wet, but he was too tired to care. Closing his eyes, he must have dozed. The next thing he knew, paws were pattering across the forest floor toward him, he tensed and peeked over the rim of the nest. Jake bounded from the trees with a wad of leaves and feathers clasped between his jaws. He stopped at the edge of the hollow and dropped them in. You can line your nest with these. Talltail ducked as leaves, twigs, and feathers showered his pelt. He stood up and shook out his fur. Thanks. Leaning down, he picked up a short stick between his teeth and tossed it out of the nest. You might want to check for sharp bits next time. Sorry, Jake hopped down beside him and began picking twigs from the litter. He tossed them out, then paddled the soft moss with his paws. That feels better. In Wind Clan, we line our nests with sheep's wool, Talltale remarked. I'll get some, Jake jumped out. It's okay, you don't have to. Bones aching with tiredness, Talltale sat down. Jake was already heading toward the edge of the trees. I won't be long. 
Talltail curled back into the moss, ignoring the dampness. He rested his nose on his paws and closed his eyes. Just a few more moments sleep and he'd feel better. Darkness swirled through his thoughts and pulled him into tumbling dreams. Tall tale, his father's voice echoed from the shadows. Tall tale, dreaming, stared around. Shadows crowded against his pelt, turning the air thick until he struggled for breath. Then something started falling on him, cold, wet earth, heavy as stones, more and more until his mouth and nose were clogged. He was inside the gorge tunnel. Suddenly, eyes blinked in the blackness. Sparrow! Talltail recognized the cold, amber gaze of the rogue flashing in the dark. Where's Sandgorse? Have you left him behind? Panic surged beneath Talltail's pelt. Sandgorse! Sandgorse! He pushed past Sparrow, calling into the darkness. Water rumbled in the distance, its roar growing louder, and sticky mud dragged at Talltail's legs. You abandoned him! Talltail turned on Sparrow, lashing his soaked tail. But the flashing eyes had gone, and he was alone underground. More earth slid weightily onto Talltail's flank. He struggled, trying to kick free of the mud as it flooded around his paws. It lapped against his belly and dragged at his fur. Sandgorse! He shrieked in panic. Talltail! His father's voice returned his call. Talltail! Talltail! A paw shook his shoulder. Talltail jerked up his head. Jake was in the nest beside him, poking him. His eyes were wide with excitement. You have to come and see this. Sheep's wool surrounded Talltail, soft against his pelt. Did you collect all that? Talltail stared at it, still dazed from his dream. Yes, Jake hopped out of the nest. But I found something else. Come on. Talltail struggled to his paws, fighting the heaviness of sleep. I'm coming. He hauled himself out of the nest and followed Jake. Jake padded briskly between the trees, weaving past brambles and bracken, and hopped a rotting log. Talltail scrambled over it, still drowsy. What is it? Irritation itched beneath his fur. Couldn't Jake have let him sleep? Look! Jake stopped beside a beech trunk and nodded toward the ground. Smell that! Tall Tail's nose was already twitching. Cat scent, Jake announced proudly. When I'd fetched the wool, I decided to have a sniff around, and I found this. A jumble of scents clung to the leaf strewn soil between the tree roots. Tall Tail leaned closer, opening his mouth. Is it the rogues? Jake demanded. There was a familiar hint to the smell. I think it might be. Tall Tail straightened up and stared at Jake, feeling a worm of excitement stir in his belly. The scents were too frozen to tell for sure, but they were definitely cat scent and definitely familiar. They're stale. He unsheathed his claws and sank them into the cold, damp earth. But we're on the right trail. Chapter 34 Talltail woke in the wool-lined hollow between the oak roots. He could feel Jake breathing beside him, his pelt warm where their fur touched. He lifted his head, tasting the air. The icy chill had gone, replaced by dampness. The musty aroma of dying leaves flooded the nest. Jake. Talltail nudged the kitty pet. Unfrozen, the cat sense they'd found last night would be much stronger. He hopped out of the nest, his paws sliding on the soggy leaves that had crunched under paw yesterday. Jake blinked open his eyes. What is it? He yawned. 
The weather's changed, Talltale told him. There might be a trail we can follow. Jake scrambled out of the nest, his nose twitching. He glanced at the remains of the squirrel Talltale had caught last night and licked his lips. Should we hunt first? Talltale blinked. We can hunt later. We have to check those scents. Heart quickening, Talltale headed for the trail Jake had led him along yesterday, mouth open, tasting for scents. He smelled moldy bark and damp leaves. Prey scent hung heavy on the air and the stale ting of fox. Jake trotted after him. Can you remember where they were? How could I forget? Talltale's fur rippled along his spine. It was his first real evidence that he was on the trail of the rogues. If it is the rogues, he broke into a run. He recognized Sparrow's scent before he'd even reached the beach where the rogues had sheltered. Loosened by the mild frost, the smell flooded the damp air, stale but clear. Talltale skidded to a halt beside the flattened leaves where the rogues had clearly spent more than one night. In the pale dawn light, he noticed the bones of prey scattered nearby and spotted a thin film of fur clinging to the craggy bark at the base of the tree. Jake stopped beside him, panting. I thought I'd lost you for a moment, he puffed. I had to know if it was them. Talltale stood with his legs braced, his old rage surging back as Sparrow's scent filled his nose. He could taste Rena's scent too, and Bess's. A pang tugged his heart as he remembered how welcoming he'd been when the rogues had first arrived. How could he have been so foolish and trusting? He should have known they were trouble the moment they set paw on Wind Clan territory. Why didn't his clanmates understand the threat of letting strangers into the camp? Rabbit brains! They believed the rogues were their friends, even after Sparrow had caused Sandgorse's death. Talltale curled his claws into the soft earth, a growl rumbling in his throat. I'll make you sorry. Talltale? Jake was staring at him. Are you okay? Talltale flicked the tip of his tail. I'm fine, he muttered. I just want to find those cats. Jake dipped his head. We'll find them, he promised. Talltale paced the edge of the abandoned nest until he found a scent trail leading away between the trees. It was old, but still strong enough to track. Pelt pricking, he began to follow it. Where are we going? Jake called. Can't you smell their trail? Jake caught up. I can only smell trees and leaves. He stuck out his tongue. There are so many new scents out here, it's hard to tell them apart. You'll get used to it. Talltale glanced at Jake, suddenly realizing that the Tom was supposed to be going home. Aren't you heading back to Two Leg Place? He asked. Jake blinked at him. What? Now that we've found the trail, I can't leave you to face Sparrow alone. But this is my mission. I should... Talltale's mew trailed away. He didn't want Jake to go. He searched the kitty pet's green gaze. You don't have to come. I want to! Jake shifted his paws, adding quietly, if you don't mind, that is. Tall tail glanced at the ground, feeling hot. I don't mind, he murmured. It's good to have company. That's settled then. Jake marched away, tail high. I know it's your mission, and I won't put my whiskers where they don't belong. He plunged past a clump of shriveled ferns. But I can help you track Sparrow down. After that, it's up to you. Tall tail purred. Thanks, Jake. He tasted the air. Um, uh, you do know that you're heading the wrong way, don't you? The scent trail headed along a ridge in the forest floor. Jake was tramping uphill, veering away through the trees. Jake stopped and tasted the air. I am? 
his ears flattened. Maybe you should lead the way, he mewed. Amused, Talltail headed along the ridge, his paws slipping on the layer of decaying leaves. He was used to grass and peat, firm turf that sprang beneath his feet. Jake trotted beside him, more at ease with the slippery trail, until brambles started to crowd the path. Ow! Jake tripped over a prickly tendril, hopping on three legs and shaking his injured paw. Are you okay? Talltail stopped and sniffed Jake's leg. No blood scent. I'd be better if that hadn't tripped me up. Jake glared at the bramble. Talltail scanned the woods. The scent trail headed through bracken, where fallen branches and rotting logs crisscrossed the forest floor, echoing the tangled canopy above. The rogue seemed to tackle every obstacle head on, moving forward regardless of the territory. Come on, Talltail padded around the bramble, watching for spiky tendrils. He hopped over a fallen branch and pushed his way into the bracken. Broken stems showed the rogue's trail, tainted with their scent. A decaying tree lay across the path, and he scrambled over it, his paws slipping on the slimy moss. On the other side, the ground turned boggy, Talltail slowed as the sucking mud dragged at his paws. I thought you said that rogues chose the easiest path, Jake grunted, shaking mud from his forepaw. It was probably frozen when they passed, Talltail guessed. Can you tell how old the scents are? Jake scrambled onto harder ground and shook crumbs of leaf litter from his whiskers. No, the smell's quite fresh. Talltail told him, but the frost might have preserved it. He glanced at the sky, gray above the treetops. Come on. He pulled his paws free of the cloying mud. If it starts raining, the scents might be washed away. The trees here were younger and thicker, their leaf bare branches jutting low to the ground. Talltail had to keep low ducking one branch and leaping another like a squirrel. He heard wood crack and split as Jake blundered after him. Talltail stopped and turned, breathless, as they reached a clearing. This is tough going. Jake's gaze flashed with alarm. Look out! He barged past Talltail, his orange pelt bushing out. Where are you going? Talltail whipped around. A dark, russet shape was blazing toward them. Fox! Jake hurled himself in its path as the fox lunged at Talltail. The kitty pet reared up and slashed at the fox's muzzle. The fox ducked away, showing its sharp yellow teeth, then spraying at Jake again. Quick as a bird, Talltail shot forward, slicing the fox's muzzle. The fox yelped, eyes sparking with rage. Tall Tail felt fur brush his flank. Jake was beside him. Tall Tail reared up on his hind legs as the fox attacked again. Jake reared up too. Tall Tail launched a flurry of blows at the fox, and Jake joined in. The fox snapped at them, one side, then the other. Tall Tail's claws hooked flesh and he felt blood spurt against his cheek. The fox yelped, then growled, its eyes narrowing. Talltail's heart lurched. We're just making it angry. He glanced sideways at Jake. Eyes narrow, ears flat, Jake was hissing as viciously as any warrior. He slammed a front paw against the fox's muzzle. Talltail matched his blow. They fell into a steady rhythm, lashing out at the fox with relentless fury. Then Tall Tail stumbled over a fallen twig. He lost his balance and dropped onto all fours. Jake dropped beside him. Tall Tail let the momentum take him down to the ground and rolled all the way over. Jake rolled with him, and they leaped to their paws beside the fox's flank and began swiping again. The fox shrieked. He can't fight us both, Talltail yowled with a rush of triumph. Can you hold him while I go for his tail? 
Jake called back. Not for long! Talltail gritted his teeth and lashed out even more fiercely as Jake darted toward the fox's haunches and clamped his teeth around the base of its tail. Talltail heard a crunch as Jake bit down hard. The fox writhed, yelping, and as Jake let go, it tore past Talltail and fled away through the trees. Talltail dropped onto all fours, panting. His forepaw stung where the fox's teeth had grazed it. Did it hurt you? Jake was at his side in a moment, sniffing for wounds. Just a scratch. Talltail showed him the scrape along his paw. Not deep. Barkface would treat it with dock. I'll find some. Jake trotted away past the ferns. He was back a few moments later with a wad of dock in his jaws. He dropped it at Talltail's paws. Lumps of fur were sticking out around Jake's neck, and his orange pelt was darkened with spots of blood. Talltail sat down. Are you okay? I've had worse wounds from next door's Tom. He dipped his head to show Talltail a long heeled nick in his ear. Talltail sniffed it, a rush of gratitude sweeping through him as Jake's warm scent touched his nose. Thank you, Jake, he murmured. What for? Jake straightened up. You saved my life, Talltail paused. Again. Jake purred. No problem. He sniffed the dock. Do you wrap this around your paw or what? You chew it and lick it into the wound, Talltail told him. Jake wrinkled his nose. Talltail's whiskers twitched with amusement. It's okay, I can do it myself. He grabbed a leaf in his jaws and began chewing. Jake watched as he pulped it and worked it into the scratch with his tongue. Will that really make it better? It'll stop the wound from going bad, Talltail meowed. Jake waited until Talltail had used up all of the leaf. Can you walk? He asked. Talltail's wound stung and his hind leg ached where he'd strained it, rearing up. But he wanted to keep following the rogue scent. A heavy shower might wash it away. I'm fine, he insisted. He limped across the clearing, sniffing the ground, his tail twitching as he picked up Rena's scent. Algernons and sparrows mingled with it, and he could smell Bess and Mole, too. He followed the trail through a hawthorn bush and past a gorse thicket, stumbling as leaves slid beneath his paws. Jake darted to his side, pressing against him. Lean on me, he ordered. I'm okay, Tall tell me out, but he let some of his weight rest against Jake's soft shoulder. They padded on through the forest, Talltail sniffing for scent, Jake watching the ground for twigs and ruts. Talltail slowed as he saw the forest lighten ahead. They must be near the edge. Jake stiffened beside him. Can you hear that? Talltail pricked his ears. A buzzing, like swarming bees, hummed in the distance. What is it? A thunderpath stench touched his nose, but the noise was too whiny to be monsters. It sounds like a grass cutter, Jake told him. Talltail blinked at him. A what? The two legs use them to shave the grass. Two legs are rabbit brains. Talltail strained to see past the trees. Why would they be using one here? Jake sniffed. Perhaps there's a den beyond the trees. Let's find out. They crept through the trunks, slowing as they neared the edge of the woods. Talltail flattened his ears as the buzzing pierced his pelt, much louder now. The ground trembled beneath his paws. As they broke from the trees, Talltail halted. A hillside sloped past them. The grass had been churned into wide circles of mud as though huge claws had reached down and raked it. The thunderpath stench was so strong, Jake coughed. 
That's not a grass cutter, he choked. What is it? The buzzing had grown to a roar, to countless roars, which were rolling toward them over the crest of the slope. We should stick to the side of the woods, Jake suggested hoarsely. It might be quieter at the bottom of the valley. Talltail could feel him trembling. The ground trembled even more. Perhaps we should head back into the forest, he growled over the noise. We can pick up the trail farther down. He stopped as a deafening roar exploded around them, so loud that it blasted them to the spot. Three huge shapes were speeding over the rise, bouncing over the churned grass toward them. Each ran on two black spinning paws that threw up mud in a wave behind them. Two legs sat astride, hunkered down over the monster's dirt-spattered bodies. Talltail froze, choking as Thunderpath stench rolled over him. Heat pulsed toward him. Star Clan, help us! Talltail closed his eyes as a heavy lump of mud hit his flank. More sprayed his cheek. He flinched away, pressing himself against Jake, and braced for searing pain and darkness to swamp him. The roaring eased. Talltail peered through slitted eyes as mud rained down around them. The monsters were lurching away, heading down slope until they disappeared around the corner of the trees. Talltail struggled to get his breath, his flank throbbing where earth had battered it. Jake? He lifted his head. Jake, are you hurt? He could feel the kitty pet pressing stiffly against him. You crow brains! That's not Jake. Talltail looked up. On the slope above, a tom glared down at them. With a gasp, Talltail recognized the creamy brown pelt of Algernon. Rena stood beside him, her eyes round with shock. Why didn't you run? You could have been killed. Algernon swished his tail. You just stood there like lumps of wood. He paused, his eyes widening. Tall paw? Rena pushed past him. Talpa! She pricked her ears. Is that you? Chapter 35 The roar of the monsters hung in the air, still thick with their stench. Talpa! Rena thrust her muzzle closer. What are you doing here? Is Wind Clan okay? He blinked at her. The rogues? He'd found them. He could hardly believe it. As he searched for words, Rena sniffed him, her ginger and white pelt pricking. Why are you here? She asked. Jake lifted his muzzle shakily. We've been looking for you. Tall Tail flashed him a warning look. Don't say any more. Do you need help? Rena's eyes sparked with worry. Did Heatherstar send you? The buzzing of the monsters was growing louder again. Algernon glanced over his shoulder. We'd better get out of here. He began to nudge Jake and Talltail into the forest. Our camp's at the bottom of the slope. Talltail turned and limped toward the cover of the trees. You're hurt, Rena pressed beside him. Just bruised, Talltail told her. The shower of mud had battered him hard, and his hind leg ached from the run-in with the fox. At least the scratch on his foreleg was numb from the dock leaf. I'm fine. Good, Rena guided him through a swath of bracken, which was limp and wilting in the cold, damp air. Algernon hurried Jake after them. Didn't you realize you were walking into a herd of monsters? I thought it was a grass cutter, Jake told him. Out here? Algernon stared at him as though he was crazy. Rena paused and sniffed. You're a kitty pet. Her gaze jerked toward Talltail. What are you doing with a kitty pet? Talltail swallowed. He helped me find my way through Two-Leg Place. 
Rena frowned. We'd better keep moving. You can explain everything when we're safe. I'll lead, Algernon pushed past her, nosing through the bracken and heading down slope. Brambles clustered between the trees, fighting hawthorn bushes for the light at the edge of the forest. Talltail kept his eyes on Algernon, trying to follow his paw steps through the tangle of branches. <clears throat> Jake gasped as he stumbled behind. Are you okay? Talltail called. He's fine, Rena was helping Jake to his paws. Follow me. She nosed her way between Talltail and Jake, and they walked single file, following Algernon. A stream cut through the trees like a tiny gorge, its banks steep. Algernon sprang across it easily. Talltail teetered on the brink, gazing down at the thin trickle of water below. Just jump, Algernon urged. Talltail launched himself off the edge, his paws slithering on the mud. He reached out and dug his claws into the far bank and hauled himself up. A wind clan cat shouldn't be out here, Algernon shook his head. You belong on the moor. Rena landed lightly beside him. Why did you come? A thump sounded behind, followed by a small splash. Talltail glanced back. Jake had disappeared. He rushed to the edge of the stream and peered down the steep bank. Jake was writhing at the bottom, trying to find a paw hold in the mud. Tall tail curled his hind claws deep into the earth and leaned down, snatching at Jake's scruff and holding him while the kitty pet regained his footing. Thanks, Jake grunted. Tall tail leaned back as Jake scrambled up beside him. Rena was looking confused. Why are you helping a kitty pet? She wrinkled her nose as she looked at Jake. He helped me. Talltail told her simply. Come on. Algernon nodded them onward. The monsters were still roaring at the edge of the trees. We can talk about it when we reach camp. Is this where you live now? Talltail asked. It's just temporary, Algernon told him, patting away. Bracken scraped Talltail's nose as Algernon led them through another clump. He narrowed his eyes against the fronds, blinking as he emerged into a small, leaf-strewn clearing. Mole lay between the roots of an elm, a gray bundle of fur in a heap of dark green moss. He lifted his head as Talltail followed Algernon from the bracken. What's he doing here? Who? Bess stuck her head out from beneath a holly bush. Her eyes widened, and she slid out her black and white pelt sleek. Tall Tail figured they must have lived well since they left the clan. Tall Paw? Bess blinked. Is that you? I'm Tall Tail now. You have your warrior name, Rena mewed in surprise. Congratulations. Bess's gaze flicked to Rena. Where did you find them? I think they found us by the sound of it. Rena told her. Jake stopped beside Talltail and breathed softly in his ear. What do we do now? Act normal, Talltail murmured. Lifting his muzzle, he stared at Bess. I'm glad I managed to find you. His explanation would sound more convincing if he offered it before they asked. His thoughts raced. What reason could he give for tracking them here? Is there trouble in Wind Clan? Bess asked. No, Talltail shifted his paws. Everything's fine, but. But when I watched you leave at the end of Greenleaf, I realized there was more to see than just Wind Clan territory. He felt his fur smooth as he eased into his story. I was hoping you'd let me travel with you. Algernon looked at Jake. Eyes narrow. What about the kitty pet? His name is Jake, Talltail meowed. The bushes swished on the far side of the small clearing, and Sparrow slid out.
Tall paw? Tall tail swung around, meeting the brown tom's impassive gaze. Hi, Sparrow. It's tall tail now. He swallowed his rage as it tightened his throat. A vision flooded his mind. He was pinning Sparrow to the ground, claws deep in the murderer's throat, blood bubbling at the tom's mouth. You're trembling. Sparrow's cool mew snapped him from his thoughts. Are you all right? Talltail shifted his paws, thinking fast. We were nearly squashed by two pawed monsters. Bess faced Sparrow. He says he wants to travel with us. What about Wind Clan? I was tired of all the duties and rules, Talltail mewed. I wanted to see what it was like to live free, like you. And the kitty pet? Sparrow's gaze didn't give away anything. He simply flicked it from Talltail to Jake. He's been helping me track you down, Talltail explained. He'll be going home now that I've found you. Talltail felt Jake stiffen beside him. Not yet. Bess sniffed Jake's muddy pelt. You look like you need a rest and a meal. You must both stay for the night. She flicked her tail. Rena, will you find them some moss to make nests? Tall Tail stepped forward. Thanks, but we can find our own moss, he told her. I didn't come here to be a burden. Before any of the rogues could argue, he padded across the clearing and pushed into the bracken, relieved to hear Jake trotting after him. What are we doing? Jake mewed as soon as they were far enough away from the clearing to speak privately. You're going home, Talltail told him. Jake's eyes flashed with hurt. And you're going to live here with the rogue who killed your father? Of course not, Talltail snapped. I just need to wait for my chance. Then what? Jake leaned closer, lowering his voice. Sparrow looks tough. What are you planning to do to him? Kill him. Dread hollowed Talltail's belly. He'd never killed a cat before. He forced himself to picture his father yowling in terror as mud showered around him, sealing him in darkness forever. He growled. Talltail? Jake's eyes were like twin moons, huge and pale. What's your plan? I want him to admit that he killed my father. And then? Jake's ear twitched. You said you wouldn't poke your whiskers where they didn't belong. Talltail padded toward the roots of a tree and began scraping moss from the crevices in the bark. Jake paced behind him. That cat looks dangerous, Talltail. He's just a rogue. Talltail stripped away a long piece of moss. Come back with me, Jake pleaded. You're not safe here. This is why I left my clan. Talltail hooked out another wad of moss and dropped it onto the pile beside him. But you can go back to them, can't you? I'm never going back, Talltail growled. Never? Jake leaned closer. Talltail felt the kitty pet's breath on his cheek. But you're a warrior. You don't have to belong to a clan to be a warrior. The words felt empty as Tall Tail spoke them. Was that true? But what are you going to do once Sparrow is dead? Jake demanded. That doesn't matter. Tall Tail hadn't thought beyond the moment of his revenge so far. He wasn't going to start now. Help me gather moss. The sun was sliding behind the distant hills. Tall Tail shivered as shadows thickened among the trees. Jake crouched beside him and started picking at the next root. If you're staying, Jake muttered, so am I. You're going to need help. Talltail paused and stared at the kitty pet. This is my mission, remember? Jake pulled a fat wad of moss from the bark with his claws. Now it's our mission. Talltail didn't argue. 
An odd sense of relief loosened his muscles. He'd grown used to having Jake around. Come on. He scraped the gathered moss into a bundle. We'd better get back. He didn't want to give the rogues too long to discuss his sudden appearance. They might start asking questions. He felt sure that Sparrow already had. The cold gleam in the Tom's eyes hadn't been welcoming. Talltail clamped his jaws around the soggy mass and began to carry it back toward the camp. Jake grabbed the rest and followed. Talltail slowed as they reached the bracken and padded through it softly, careful not to stir the stems. I don't like it. Algernon's mew made Talltail stop in his tracks. Jake halted beside him. What's wrong? They're talking about me. Unease wormed in Talltail's belly. We can't turn them away. Bess sounded firm. They're worn out. Talltail pricked his ears. But these woods are prey poor, Mole growled. There's enough for now, Rena argued. Algernon snorted. I knew we should have kept moving before we made camp. There are fish in the river, down slope, Rena pointed out. Can you swim? Algernon muttered. It's not so prey poor around here as you think. Sparrow's mew was confident. That pigeon I caught today is the first of many. Really? Mole's voice rose with interest. I've found a place where the two legs scatter grain, Sparrow told him. There will be pigeons coming for as long as it's there. Bess purred. If that's true, two extra mouths will be easy to feed. Talltail padded out of the bracken and dropped his moss. We can help you hunt. He mewed. Algernon gazed past him, his gaze resting doubtfully on Jake. Really? Jake's a quick learner, Talltale told them. He caught a mouse the other day. Jake caught his gaze. I helped, he corrected. We can manage without kitty pet help, Mole grunted. Rena padded toward the corner sheltered by the holly bush. I've piled some leaves here for you to make nests on, she meowed. Thanks. Talltail held her gaze in the half light, trying to read whether she was genuinely willing to have them stay. She tipped her head. You seem different, Talltail. Do I? Unnerved, Talltail picked up his moss and carried it to the heap of leaves Rena had scraped together. Less angry. Rena meowed. You. you didn't seem to want us anywhere near Wind Clan by the time we left. She sounded hurt and puzzled. Talltail winced. His rage was still there, burning just below his skin, but he needed these cats to accept him, trust him, at least until he had a chance to avenge his father's death. And deep down, he didn't blame Rena for anything or Bess, or Algernon, or Mole. I, I guess it took me a while to get over Sandgorse's death, he mewed, trying to sound as if the memories were long gone. I'm sorry if I offended you. Rena twitched her ears. Not offended, exactly. She sounded sympathetic. I guess it was a lot for you to deal with. Sandgorse dying like that and Sparrow surviving? Talltail shot her a sharp look. Rena was dangerously close to discovering the truth. He had to convince her he didn't hold Sparrow responsible. Oh, it wasn't Sparrow's fault, he forced out through gritted teeth. He was lucky to get out. Sandgorse wasn't. He stopped speaking as if he needed to concentrate on spreading his moss over the fallen leaves, shifting as Jake slid in beside him and began to shape the rest into a nest. Bess crossed the clearing, a pigeon in her jaws. She dropped it at Talltail's paws. I caught this earlier, she told him. You and Jake can share it. Talltail shook his head. We can't take your prey. Yes, you can, 
Sparrow called from the darkness on the far side of the clearing. Wind Clan fed us through Greenleaf. Algernon nodded. It's only fair we feed one of theirs. I'm not one of theirs anymore, Talltale told him. Algernon flicked his tail. Nonsense, he snorted. You are clan-born. You'll be a clan cat all your life. Rena reached beneath a low branch at the edge of the clearing and hauled out a damp-looking shrew and a half-eaten squirrel. She tossed the shrew to Sparrow and carried the squirrel to Bess. Mole, Algernon, will you join us? Talltail leaned down and tore the wing from the pigeon with his jaws. He nosed it toward Mole and Algernon as they crouched beside Rena's squirrel. Take this, he offered. We don't need all of it. Give them the other one, too, Jake whispered in his ear. Talltail ripped it off and dropped it at Algernon's paws. He was aware of Sparrow's gaze. He knows why I'm here. The thought flashed like fire in his mind. Fear sparked beneath his fur. He swallowed and padded back to Jake's side. Jake was already chewing on the pigeon. Talltail's belly tightened. How could he eat? Act normal. His own words echoed in his mind, and he forced himself to take a mouthful of pigeon. How's Palebird? Bess's question took him by surprise. She was looking up from the squirrel carcass, her eyes bright with interest. Pale bird? Talltail echoed dumbly. Up till now, he'd managed to block thoughts of Wind Clan from his mind. And Whiteberry, Marina purred. Are the tunnelers getting used to not tunneling? Mole asked. Talltail blinked at them, mind whirling. He never imagined he'd speak his clanmates' names again. Palebird had woolly tails kits, he told Bess. That's wonderful, Bess's eyes flashed with joy. Talltail spat out a feather. It's great, he lied. Rena swallowed a mouthful. How old are they? A quarter moon when I left. He pictured wren kit, rabbit kit, fly kit, and bristle kit, crowding around his legs, tails high, squeaking with excitement. Their voices echoed in his mind. Give us a badger ride. Can we come? Can I decide my own warrior name? He closed his eyes, surprised by the sharp pang that stabbed his heart. How could you bear to leave them? Rena's mew cut into his thoughts. They're happier without me, he growled, burying his muzzle into the soft flesh of the pigeon. Leave him be, Rena. Algernon's mew was gentle. He's had a long journey. We can ask all our questions tomorrow, when he's rested. The moon was glowing through the branches. Night wrapped the forest in silence. Far away beyond the trees, a fox barked shrilly. Jake licked his lips. I'm exhausted. He stretched and climbed into his nest. Talltail nosed the remains of the pigeon toward Algernon. Thanks for the prey. He climbed into the nest beside Jake's, their fur touching. Jake's warmth eased the racing of his heart as he watched Algernon and Mole gather the prey scraps and hide them under the holly bush. Rena and Bess settled in their nests beside the bracken. Algernon curled up beside Mole between the roots of the oak. Sparrow circled down into a thick pile of leaves in a shadowy corner of the camp. Talltail watched through narrowed eyes as Sparrow stirred in his nest, no more than a shape in the darkness. Flexing his claws, he let his lip curl as he stared at Sparrow. You killed my father. His thoughts hardened like stone shaped in fire. Now I will kill you. Chapter 36
Aren't you used to forest hunting yet? Rena called over her shoulder as she streaked ahead, zigzagging between the trees. She was chasing a squirrel. Tall Tell stumbled on a stone that rocked beneath his paw. He blinked with surprise as Jake overtook him, leaping a frosty log and gaining on Rena. How'd you get so good at this? Tall Tell puffed, dodging a branch a moment before it hit his muzzle. It's a bit like alley running. Jake disappeared through a wall of bracken. Tall Tail pelted after him, the stems crunching as he dived through them. Milky sunshine seeped through gray cloud. An icy wind whipped flecks of snow through the trees. He had lost sight of Rena through the bracken. As he plunged after her, he heard her angry mew ahead. Dog dirt! He broke from the stems to see her staring up the trunk of an ash tree. Above, a fluffy tail flicked away between the branches. Jake circled beside her. Can you climb up after it? Not that high, Rena mewed sulkily. Talltail stopped beside them, his flanks heaving. Why don't we try the field? Jake stared at him. The one with the monsters? Rena dragged her gaze away from the disappearing squirrel. They won't be there today, she meowed. They only come sometimes. Great, Talltail tasted the air, picking up the scent of grass and headed past the tree. He was sick of struggling through woodland. A run across the field would help stretch his muscles. Sleeping so close to Sparrow had knotted them until it ached to stand still. The wind might blow my thoughts clear, too. He'd spent most of the night wondering how to take his revenge on Sparrow. One plan replaced another until his head hurt. None of them seemed right. The only thing he was sure of was that he had to gain Sparrow's trust enough to get him alone. Does he trust me already? It was hard to tell what the brown rogue was thinking, his pale stare gave nothing away. I don't even know if he realizes he caused Sandgorse's death. Anger flared in Talltail's belly, and he broke into a run. I see the field, he called to Rena and Jake. The pale dawn brightened the trees ahead. Talltail scrambled around a clump of ferns, paws skidding on the icy leaves. Digging in with his claws, he raced for the light, excitement surging through him as he broke onto frost-whitened grass. The slope stretched ahead. Looking up the hillside, he could see the scars the monsters had left behind. Thunderpath stench pricked his nose as he headed across the slope. Wait for us! Rena caught up first, Jake reaching them a moment later. Are you really going to catch a rabbit? Jake panted. If I can find one, Talltail opened his mouth and let the snow-flecked wind spray his tongue. He tasted the familiar musk of rabbit. Come on, he led the way across the grass. Rena purred. It's great having young cats to hunt with. Her eye caught Talltail's. And I'm glad you've stopped being such a grumpy old badger. Jake fell in beside her. Talltail's not grumpy. Talltail glanced at his friend. Should he remind Jake how bad-tempered he'd been when the two-leg had locked him in Jake's den? When I was staying with Wind Clan, Rena recalled, I hardly dared talk to him. I was scared of getting my head bitten off. We're here to chase Rabbit, remember? Talltail muttered, memories of his grief flooding back. See? Rena flicked her ears at Jake. Grumpy old badger. He's not grumpy with me. Jake wound past Talltail, lifting his tail. Rena shrugged and sat down. Any sign of rabbit? She asked Talltail. They must still be asleep. The sun was lifting above the horizon. The wind whisked the frosty grass, scattering tiny dots of snow. I wish they'd wake up. Jake sighed. I'm hungry. You're probably missing kitty pet food. Rena licked her paw. Maybe, Jake conceded. 
Catching your food is hard work. It's even harder when you've elders and kids to hunt for, too. Tall Tail's pelt pricked as he wondered how Wind Clan was surviving Leaf Bear. Had they stocked enough prey? Colder weather was on the way, and without the tunnels to hunt in, prey might be scarcer than Heatherstar had predicted. It's their problem now. I just have to look after myself. And Jake. He looked at his friend, wondering how long they had together before the kitty pet returned to his two-leg. A sharp pain stabbed his heart. Aren't you embarrassed? Rena asked Jake suddenly. Jake blinked at her. Embarrassed? About being a kitty pet. Why? He sounded confused. Taking food from a two-leg? Rena's wide gaze was curious. It's undignified for a cat. Is it? Jake tipped his head on one side. A cat should rely on itself, not the kindness of two legs, Rena argued. I was born a kitty pet, Jake pointed out. I'm not doing any harm. He stared across the field. And if I'm eating kitty pet food, it means there's more prey for rogues like you. He nodded toward a distant tussock. Did something move over there? Talltail followed his gaze. Yes! His paws pricked as he saw rabbit ears twitch in the grass down slope. He flicked his tail at Rena. See, he challenged, even a kitty pet has the same instincts as we do. Rena's eyes sparkled. I bet he can't catch it, though. She padded past Talltail, her tail brushing his flank. Not like you. Talltail's fur rippled. He glanced self-consciously at Jake, but Jake was staring across the field at the twitching ears. What now? Jake asked. Talltail waved his tail up slope. You two head up there and circle around it. Like we caught the thrush. Jake's eyes glowed. Talltail nodded. I'll stalk it from here. Then we'll see which way it runs. As Rena and Jake headed uphill, Talltail dropped into a crouch and ran low, as fast as a swooping hawk. The wind streamed past his ears and filled them with snow till he could only hear his own heartbeat. As he neared the rabbit, he stopped and watched. It was munching the tips of the grass, lifting its head from time to time to peer nervously around. Talltail glanced up slope. Rena was nudging Jake into a crouch until they were both stalking low, circling wide around their prey and halting a little way past it. Talltail lifted his head just high enough to catch Jake's eye. Jake stared at him, questioning. Talltail nodded. Jake and Rena stalked forward. Talltail closed in. The rabbit was halfway between them, head down, ears flattened now against its spine. The warm smell of it bathed Talltail's tongue. His belly rumbled. He padded closer, gaze fixed on its brown pelt. He glimpsed the ginger and orange pelts of Rena and Jake beyond. Another few paces, and he'd be within pouncing distance. He quickened his step, eager to reach it before Rena. He wanted to carry this catch home to the rogues. It would help earn Sparrow's trust. If only the brown rogue would choke on it. Rage stirred as Talltail realized he was hunting for the cat who'd killed his father. A growl rumbled in his throat. The rabbit lifted its head, eyes sparking with panic. It hurt me. Furious, Talltail leaped for it. The rabbit shot away, eyes widening in terror as it spotted Jake and Rena lunging from the other side. It headed downhill, pelting through the thickening snowfall. Talltail haired after it, his paws thrumming, wind howling in his ears. The field sloped steeper. He narrowed his eyes against the snow, his gaze focused on the brown pelt of the rabbit. Talltail! A panicked yowl sounded from behind. Rena? He could hardly hear for the wind and the roaring of the blood in his ears. 
It felt great to be tearing over the grass again, the scent of prey in his nose, no branches to trip on, no trees to swerve around. He was gaining on the rabbit easily, just so long as it didn't have a burrow to dive down, and even if it did, he could chase it inside. I'm a tunneler's son. With a rush of triumph, Tall Tail sprang and landed squarely on the rabbit. Tall Tail! Rena's terrified shriek sounded through the wind as he skidded down the slope, snow spraying from beneath his paws. He grabbed the rabbit in his jaws and, swinging it up, crunched through its spine. It stopped struggling and hung limply in Tall Tail's mouth. Rena was racing toward him. Jake's orange pelt flashed behind. Don't move! Rena screeched. Why? Talltail dropped the rabbit and stared as Rena scrambled to a halt a tail length ahead of him. Just walk toward me, Rena ordered. Bewildered by the terror in her eyes, Talltail picked up the rabbit and padded toward her. She weaved around him, herding him farther up the slope, her pelt bristling. What's wrong? Talltail asked. You nearly went over the edge, Rena croaked. What edge? Talltail glanced back through the blizzarding snow. That's a cliff. Like the gorge? Talltail stiffened, remembering his first day as an apprentice when he nearly fell into the river. Worse. Swallowing, Rena padded warily forward. Talltail followed her, stopping when she stopped and peering over the edge of a steep, sandy cliff. Through the snow, he saw monsters hurtling below them along a huge thunder path. It cut through the gorge like a wide, angry river. He flinched as wind from the monsters' backs ruffled his whiskers. You stopped just in time. Jake halted beside him and stared down. His ears flattened when he saw the monsters streaming along the gorge, teeming like fish in a river. You would have been killed if you'd fallen down there. Tall Tail swallowed. He'd nearly died. The snow had hidden the Thunderpath's sound and scent. He was lucky he'd caught up with the rabbit when he did. Another tail length. He pictured plunging down, 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 a monster hurtling toward him. He closed his eyes. I could have been killed. An idea flared inside his mind. He trembled, not with fear, but excitement. That's how I'll do it. All he had to do was lure Sparrow here. One push, and the murdering rogue would plunge down beneath the paws of a monster. Talltail's heart pounded in his chest. Sandgorse, I promised you I'd avenge your death. Sparrow will never harm another cat again.